Bonne locale, my garden of roses. Let's take some time to talk about the New York Times story about fake followers. The New York Times this past weekend released a story following months of investigation on their part into the enormous market of fake followers and fake likes which dominate Twitter, calling out celebrities, politicians, and social media darlings alike for purchasing followers from one of the many follower bot companies that exist, Devumi. This comes with a slightly hypocritical tone, however, as the New York Times themselves and some of their affiliates, as is reported in the story, have bought followers as well. Devumi is a nondescript company that advertises itself as operating out of Manhattan, but really holds its office in West Palm Beach, Florida, under the leadership of its secretive founder and CEO, German Kalas and was revealed in court records from cases brought against him and he against former employees last year. According to the emails released by one of his former employees, Devumi had made millions of dollars selling Twitter followers, as well as YouTube and Facebook subscribers, to more than 200,000 different clients, including the likes of John Leguizamo, the technology billionaire Michael Dell, football commentator Ray Lewis, the former swimsuit model, Kathy Ireland, the host of American Ninja Warrior, Akbar Bajabiamia? I probably pronounced that wrong, sorry. And even Twitter board member, Martha Lane Fox, Democratic candidate for representative, Randy Bryce, wife of the treasure secretary, Louise Linton, and China's state-run news agency, Xinhua. And the list goes on and on. Twitter does not require any given account to be associated with a real person, having at one point the largest API for building bots for any purpose, including posting tweets on a schedule, retweeting other people's posts, announcing a post has just gone up on a news site or blog, and much more. Though Twitter cracked down on their API usage back in 2011 and 2012, their system is still broadly open to use by bots for interaction and analysis. And this is in Twitter's best interests as well. Just having these follower selling companies is because it creates the illusion of activity and popularity on the site. While shallow, the average person looks at the number of followers a person has, the number of likes and retweets a given post has as a metric of its importance or accuracy. And Twitter does not have a policy of suspending or banning those who are suspected of buying bots. As they say, it is difficult to know whether the recipient of automated follows is responsible for the purchase. And while in many of the requests for comment made by the New York Times, employees of the person contacted were often blamed for purchasing followers, likes and retweets. And this mostly serves as a cop-out to maintain the high activity and extremely high follower number of Twitter's most important members, its celebrities. Twitter lives off the support and usage of celebrities and politicians alike to maintain its image of the world's town hall. And if it were to suspend or ban those who have purchased bots to serve as followers, or the estimated 20 million bot followers themselves, we would see nearly every film star, most politicians, arguably anyone with more than 5 million followers, lose half of their follower numbers overnight, if not more. But this story has gained traction with other news outlets and businesses alike, with the evidence presented by the New York Times being used against pundits and journalists in their careers, including At The Movie's co-host Richard Roper, halting their columns and publications until further investigation can be pursued. The state of New York has announced as of Monday that they will be pursuing investigations against Devumi themselves in what is described as an attempt to prevent identity theft and social media fraud. But Devumi is merely one company amidst an enormous market of fake followers, likes, retweets, and subscribers. And filing suit against them, even for false advertising, would be a drop in the bucket compared to the larger market that, that exists for padding the numbers of one's social media presence. Devumi was merely a reseller, purchasing access to these bots with credit cards and cryptocurrency, and putting them to use as followers and retweet bots for those who forked over between 20,000 and in some cases as high as 25,000, 
excuse me, $20, and in some cases, as high as $25,000. To look more popular and influence others, to like, comment, and subscribe. None of this is new, however, and pursuing lawsuit against one man in one company, whose employees mostly exist in the Philippines and whose assets are hidden away in tax havens, will not stop the problem. This goes to a much deeper problem that exists within our relationships with social media and desire to be liked. And it's extremely, un uh, it's extremely doubtful that even Twitter or Facebook will do anything to address this problem because it's not a problem for them. If anything, it's nothing more, it's nothing but more profitable for them to have these bots padding their most important verified users accounts. Now, if I was a more wealthy person, I would have actually run my own experiment in buying bots, and I would have done my best to, you know, set up a fake account of my own, a side account for experimenting with, and see what kind of influence this would get. However, because many of these bots have come out, I was able to actually look at these accounts. Uh, despite the New York Times doing their best to hide their sources and hide their information, which they far too often do. Many of these names have come out, many of the tools that they use to investigate have come out. And if you start looking into these bots, the majority of what they do in order to look like real users is post images. And oftentimes these are pornographic images or semi-pornographic images with a girl, with a girl's ass in a thong or bare tits. And they just do this when they don't have something to retweet, they don't have someone to follow, this is just their normal activity. And these accounts actually go out of their way to look like real people. They uh, literally go out and find an account that hasn't been used in like six months, that has a profile picture that looks like a person, has a pro uh, profile biography that is easy to copy, and they copy all that information into a new account with a very similar name, usually changing an L for a capital I or vice versa, or adding extra underscores, or many of the many other options one has to, uh, you know, make a fake account. Uh, typos within the uh, handle or username is common as well. And then these fake accounts gain new life in looking very much like a real person because they stole the identity, well, at least the image and social media face of another person. And then they constantly just post porn, and porn is a huge user of purchased uh, followers, mind you, and retweet things in multiple different languages. Like sometimes, I mean, I had counted like 19 different languages on one bot, uh, which is, you know, either the most impressive thing in the world or complete bullshit once you actually look into it. However, it's important to recognize that every person who has bots following their account didn't necessarily buy them. These bots go out of their way to follow anyone who types into a hashtag on Twitter or Facebook who, you know, makes a post that gains popularity so it can look like they're just another person joining in the popularity. Bots are an enormous part of the Twitter ecosystem and the Facebook ecosystem at that, and it poses a large problem that has a very easy solution for the human brain, but certainly not for computer brains. This is one of those things where AI is completely useless, because an AI can't tell the difference. These bots are mostly either posting an image that uh, by itself cannot be determined whether or not it has any, you know, legitimacy of being posted by a human, or it's retweeting something from someone else, often a human, making their account to a, to a, uh, an artificial intelligence system look like it's, it's quite human. Because here the text that it's reading was written by a human, not generated by a bot itself. But as a person, you can go out and look at these accounts and see what followers y you have, for example, that are bots or, you know, otherwise fake followers of that variety, just by looking at the sheer volume, the 
uh, fixed times of day that it posts things, uh, and the, uh, the variety and complete chaotic nature of what is being posted. There's no common thread or personality to the posts when taken in bulk. And all you gotta do is scroll through and you can see, oh, this isn't a person. This is... Most people who have been on social media since its inception back in 2005 are very aware of how to see a bot. But even if Twitter were to go out of their way, they would never be able to completely rid themselves of bots. It's the STD of social media. And whether any of us like it or not, we all have bots following us, whether we paid for them or not. One of the biggest identifiers of having not paid for bots might be the fact that you lose view, you lose subscribers and you gain subscribers, and you tend to be in some sort of very, you know, average place. For example, if you're on YouTube, your YouTube numbers and your Twitter numbers are probably going to be very similar. Uh, your Facebook numbers and your YouTube numbers are probably going to be very similar. Now, due to the different audiences that use Twitter and Facebook, your Twitter and Facebook numbers can vary pretty wildly. But YouTube makes a good anchor point because you can see and hear the real person behind the screen. And the operation of a channel kind of requires human interaction. That said, YouTube's also going downhill because there are bots that will download a video and then repost it itself uh, completely without problem and then gain followers, 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 basically just reposting existing videos. This is one of the reasons that I'm really happy to be on BitChute because while bots can exist for it, the, the, uh, the market for BitChute is still very small, although, wait, BitChute just changed their name, didn't they? Uh, Speak Out is what they're calling themselves now. Uh, and they haven't updated everything, but they're in the process of changing over, and uh, numbers there will be very much lower, just like they're lower on Gab.ai and Mines. However, Mines has been pretty overrun by bots at this point as well. And you'll be able to find a, a happy average of your real viewer base from using these numbers on alt media and alt tech sites. But we're not going to be seeing the end of this anytime soon. And people are going to start losing their jobs. People are going to start losing their livelihoods over the fact that they owned or had bots on their accounts mostly for buying those bots, which is easily evidenced by the email address, credit card number, and names of, you know, whether it be the name of the individual who uh, is gaining followers, or the name of someone who works directly for them, usually under, you know, social media activist. I apologize for the um, noise in the background. Uh, social media manager or whatever. But these social media managers are pressured to get impossible results. I need a million followers. Well, how are you going to get a million followers in this day and age when the market is pretty damn well cornered on Twitter? Well, you go out and you buy them on the company credit card. That's how you do it. It's extremely unfortunate, but attacking people right now is not the solution. Looking further into why such a market exists is a far more important way of dealing with this. Because this market exists because people want to feel popular. They want to feel liked. They want to have that social media influence. Thank you all for listening, and I will catch you next time. Bonsoir. Mm -hmm.